Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. This time we're in Deepwater National Park. It's situated 103 kilometers northwest of Bundaberg and takes about an hour and a half to get here from Gladstone and Bundaberg. So what makes this park special? The park is protected by some sandy beaches, has diverse coastal lowland vegetation and the catchment of the near pristine deep water creek one of Queensland's few remaining undisturbed coastal freshwater systems. So you've got three main parts to the actual track. You can go from Agnes Waters through to Flat Rock, which is just a day use area, then through to Middle Rock, which is a camping area, and then through to Wreck Rock, which is by far the nicer camping area of all of them. So we'll continue through the track, have a look through it, and enjoy the video. It hasn't had too much rain actually. If you see just under the surface of the sand, it's all dry. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But the tracks are freshly driven like. So I'll just give you some more facts about the park. Deepwater National Park itself is fairly new and was only established in 1988 and covers a total of 4,090 hectares. So the park beach frontage is only 9 kilometres, which means a lot of it is inland area. Most of that beach frontage is dominated by 70 metre high sand dunes, and the rest of it is rocky headlands from old volcanic action. Beachfront in the Deepwater National Park is a pristine nesting ground for loggerhead and leatherback turtles. Flatback and green turtles have also been found to nest on the park's beaches. This location is the only mainland site where leatherbacks repeatedly return to lay. Along with turtles, there is a great list of birds that come to this area as well, including emus and kites.
We fast approached Myrtle Rock Campground. It is located on the northeastern side of Deepwater National Park. It is the first campsite from the Agnes Waters access of the park. This sand and wood chip bush camp has undefined sites behind the four dunes and can only be accessed by full drive. There are no facilities provided here, so you'll need to take all the essentials yourself, such as the gas fuel stoves, plenty of drinking water, rubbish bags, toilets, amenities, stuff like that. So from January to April is the marine turtle hatching season here, which usually happens at night, and their nests can be found along the beaches just above the high tide mark. The beach is unpatrolled and there may be rips and sharks and they also take note of the marine stinger season from October to May. So we've made it through to Rec Rock Campground. So Rec Rock is a small campsite just behind some frontal dunes at the southeastern end of Deepwater National Park. So it has about 14 campsites which can have six people maximum on the beach. It provides some excellent beachfront camping with sand and wood chip surfaces and is just a skip across the dunes to the beach. So each campsite most of them have some tables and all of them have those big cast iron fire pits. You must bring your own firewood as it is a national park. So the park is near the town of 1770. As you know we've come from Agnes itself. And you can book any of your permits through Dep the Department of National Resources, Sports and Racing. So we'll go through the park, have a look, get out, go to the beach and take some photos. So keep up watching and enjoy the rest of it.
hey, a tractor's been here, like, after us, because it's not, like, it's over our tracks. Are you sure it's not the ranger's car? No, no, no. The mud tracks are too big for it to be the ranger's car. Yeah. See the tractor? See the tractor? Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. He's like, run away, they found me. <laughs> So we finished the four-wheel drive track and we're just about to cross over the deep water creek itself. We decided to pull over to the right and have a look at the creek. It's a good job we did because there was lots of movement in the water. The cicadas and all the other insects that we've seen throughout the track as well as the rain and all the surface activity gave me a good indication of what the fish would hit. Unfortunately I only had one surface lure for the trip, it was my little Lucky Craft Carol Jr. So I pulled the rod out of the rod tube, connected my Stratic to it and got fishing. So I originally fished up to the left there trying to cast out to the sticks. I got chased up by two barra but neither of them hooked on so I came back to cast off the concrete little spillway area in which I finally connected up to a little tarpon who as soon as I landed when I went to pick it up busted straight through the 8 pound leader it must have rubbed through with its mouth earlier on and that quickly said goodbye to my little lucky craft so that was the end of the fishing for that trip as I didn't have any other surface lures and they decided not to hit any of the little deep diving minnows that I had After trying and trying to get another fish on a subsurface lure and kicking myself for only bringing one surface lure, we headed off to make our way to Reels Beach, which we then decided to make hot dogs for lunch. Now you'll see us using peanut paste instead of butter or whatever else you guys use. If you haven't tried that, don't judge. If you have tried it, you will know how good it is. It's something my mum did when she was little and it's just carried on in our family ever since. Is it on? Yeah. How do I even know what it's recording? To cook the hot dogs, I decided to buy one of the new compliant little butane gas stoves and had my Coleman fold up fry pan. So while Renee buttered the, or peanut buttered, the buns I should say, I got her on hand to cook the little frankfurts that we were using, while well, then she cut up some onions, which we were trying to caramelise and put some beer on and made some really, really nice caramelised onions to put on top of the hot dogs. So we enjoyed that as a quick lunch. We then decided to head off and have a look at the Baffle Creek Rural and Fishing Supply Store and then travel home along the Interland Road back to Agnes Waters for dinner that night.
that's pretty much it for the video today guys thank you very much for watching we'll be posting up some more full drive videos later on we've got another one from the urumbula area and then we'll be doing a lot more four-wheel driving adventures from now on. Now that the contour cameras are in the car, it's very easy to record this sort of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed watching and stay tuned for future videos.